Hello, I'm Maker Melissa. Welcome to Maker Melissa's Lab. You may remember me talking about this printer in an older episode, and it looked a little bit different at that time. Well, I started working on an upgrade, and this was some of my, my footage that never made it into a video. So I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the footage to get it to where it is now, and then we'll go ahead and talk about where I want to go with this printer. Let's get started. That video I had made where I was describing this printer and some of the problems I was experiencing with it such as it not going very high and a small build plate and it being 24 volts I decided to try doing a few things in order to make it so it printed better I was actually converting it to a Bowden style here and that was going to give it a little bit more room and it still had the problem of being on 12 volts and just, it, it was still going to inherit a few problems. I never really loved this triangle frame here and I really like the i3 style. So here's uh, some clips of how I got it to where it is now. We're gonna be upgrading my RepRap printer. I've either purchased or printed a number of upgrades and we're gonna go ahead and install them. Upgrades include some build tack sheets, some binder clips to hold on the build plate, a new cover for the LCD, some braided sleeving for wire management, an improved Z in stop switch setup, a new ramps board, and some hardware to convert to a Bowden system. I'm gonna get rid of these medium sized binder clips. I'm gonna replace it with some smaller ones here. Take this glass off. Pull the cap on tape off. This is kind of pointless. Now we got a nice surface for it to adhere to and it's going to be where I can flex it. I decided not to go with anything that was magnetic. This was actually one of the first print jobs that I ever did. And just to show you a comparison between that one and one of my latest print jobs, you can see it came out much better on these little nut holders than it did on here. In fact, it looks like a few of them didn't even quite come out. Okay, there we go. See if the card still goes in. Ooh, nice. Very nice.
I've decided to replace this because with it having two screws on here, it's a little bit wobbly. It's not very accurate. It's really hard to adjust. So I've decided to go with a non-adjustable version. Now what had happened was the little metal rocker arm had actually come off. It was very poor quality. So what I ended up doing is I took a rocker switch like I currently have on there and I desoldered the old switch and soldered some wires between the contacts of this end stop switch and the little wire since it was a smaller one and because this was a larger switch I also flipped it over but the common normally open and normally closed connections all match up with the board. Looks like I should have flipped this the other way. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and install this ramps board next. The reason I'm replacing the ramps with the exact same model is because I went ahead and removed this little diode here. And the reason I removed that diode was because I had previously had it overload the power and feed back into the computer and destroy the USB port. I've been printing from the SD card because then I don't have to have to turn on a computer and I always have that and if the computer locks up, a print job fails, etc. So now that I'm printing from the SD card, I want it powered off of one power source again. And currently I'm just basically having a USB cord plugged in here and going into a USB power adapter. That is much better. Here is the entire hot end and extruder assembly. I'd actually like to show you the end, what I did on here to get it to fit. I originally had this with my for my J head hot end. But when I replaced it with this E3D version 5, I fed a little bit of Teflon tubing in here. Put a little spring around this to kind of fatten it up a little bit and hold it in place. I put some washers in here and I put that and it ended up fitting here wonderfully. I went ahead and I purchased the steel bracket off of Amazon. The problem is the 20 millimeter screws are too short and the 25 are too long. Okay, let's try cutting it off with a Dremel. And I just realized I should have put the bracket on first. Let's see if this fits on now. These old nuts are a little rusty, so I'm going to put some new ones on. Okay. 
Okay, well, apparently I needed to clean that up first. Well, that's a bad design. And so, as you can see, I never completed the printer because I was actually running into some of the printing problems with some of the parts on the Ender 3 that I was actually trying to print off, um, such as some adapters for this version 5, E3D version 5 clone. And I had been thinking about it, and I wanted to actually redo the frame on here completely. So I wanted to go with more of the i3 style. And I had purchased uh, a bunch of these 2040 aluminum extrusions here and I was going to go ahead and replace the frame here and there maybe reinforce it. Well I'd go gone ahead and purchased that and while I was looking at it I came across uh, something called a Prusa Bear which was basically like a Prusa i3 Mark III type printer with the frame completely upgraded to use 2040 extrusion and so I thought that was perfect since that's what I was going to go with anyways. So what I've been trying to do is model this to go with more the Prusa Bear and I've already cut these. Now these are going to be a little bit taller. I went with longer on here because I had also ordered these lead screws which are 380 millimeter and I actually wanted to make use of a lot of the existing parts on here such as the motors because these are actually really good motors. They're just a little bit thicker than the Prusa ones. One of the things I decided to do was go with these rigid couplers here instead of these aluminum ones because these have a little spiral to them so they have a little bit of backlash possibility even though that's probably not going to happen. But the other thing was because the original Prusa actually has integrated lead screws into the stepper motors. I wanted to make this as narrow as possible. Now, one of the problems is I actually have to go ahead and redesign what some of the x-axis pieces in order to accommodate the fact that there's going to be a coupler. So I purchased some of the hardware that I'm going to be needing for building the bear. I've gone ahead and calculated out and measured and cut a lot of these already. I actually went to my local makerspace and somebody named Todd helped me with that, with helping me get the milling done on that. And then I ended up cleaning it up with a file, so it actually ended up really good. I've gone ahead and I cut all these rods. They were extra rods I had originally gotten for this. And I actually just did that here. Now I'm not quite 100% sure what I'm going to do with the electronics yet. I happen to have this extra SKR 1.3 board from another project I was working on. I have these TMC 2209 stepper motors which have the sensorless homing on them that's going to be required. Now the board that comes with the Prusa printer actually has the TMC 2130s on them and the reason they went with the 2130s because at the time that was the only ones with the sensorless homing. Now the 2209s were kind of the successor to the 2208s and so that should work. Some of these parts that I got are actually not original Prusa. This is a little carriage that I got off of AliExpress because it was quite a bit cheaper than the one on Prusa. I think that's fine. But other parts I went with, I wanted to go with genuine Prusa ones. Like these little trapezoid nuts, I decided to go with the genuine Prusa ones. And those are good. I have been printing a ton of parts here, including the little build tool here, which measured perfectly. Um, I have a Bontech extruder. I may or may not use that one. Uh, I went ahead and I had purchased the Prusa feet and actually they worked better on my Prusa MK3S. And so I went ahead and I took the ones off of there and I found these are actually going to fit in this extrusion really well. So I'm gonna actually use these feet on this. I have a plan for doing a filament holder here. It's going to be kind of cool. I'm going to be cutting this into a couple different pieces and then mounting it on one of the, this bar at an angle with these special angled pieces 
And so then I can go from here to here to there and then kind of adjust the angle finite and I can get sort of like the original Prusa filament holder. And I'm going to use the, do that with these rollers that I printed off here that are going to end up going on there. And I tested it and even at an angle the filament rolls will actually hang just fine so that they're not hitting the other part of this. Now one of the other things I wanted to upgrade is this has a 12 volt power supply and I want to go with a 24 volt system because one of the issues that this has really plagued me with since I first got it is it takes forever for the heated bed to heat up. And when I went with 24 volts the first time with the Ender 3, the difference was night and day. I mean, I was literally taking a heat gun on the bed just to get it to heat up and uh, it was just awful. But I mean, I was printing ABS and I really had no business doing that with a 12 volt power supply here. So I haven't decided if I'm gonna go with a another Meanwell power supply that's 24 volts or if I'm gonna go with an actual Prusa one. So the first order of business is I'm gonna actually be building up the frame. I'm not gonna be doing that in this video. This is just kind of to talk about what my plans were with this printer here. But I will be making a series of videos that will show some of the steps as I go along and build it. Another one of the things I wanted to do is these have these little wooden platforms on them here. And when it was sitting in storage, they actually kind of had gotten a little bit of mildew on them. And I went ahead and I cleaned them off and they looked actually pretty good. And they haven't gotten any kind of growth on them since then. but. I'd rather avoid the wood in case there's any rot on them. I want to have auto bed leveling and that's where I am with this printer. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit like if you liked it. I use the likes and dislikes to kind of gauge which kind of content I want to end up doing. And I really migrated more towards doing a lot of the 3D printer stuff. Be sure to subscribe so that you can keep up to date as I post new videos about this printer and work on the build. And I will see you in my next video.